You are listening to the new Mutual Audio Network. Welcome home. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. It's season 14 of the Sonic Summerstock Playhouse. Performing through the summer months, the Sonic Summerstock Playhouse is presented by the Sonic Society for the Mutual Audio Network and features producers and actor troops from the modern age of audio drama who recreate and reproduce classic old-time radio plays. The Playhouse endeavors to bring shows to a contemporary audience for the love of the medium and not in any intended form of copyright infringement of those classic radio shows. And now, we go to our host of the Sonic Summerstock Playhouse on stage now, Mr. David Alt. A few miles south of Soledad, the Salinas River drops in close to the hillside bank and runs deep and green. The water is warm too, for it has slipped twinkling over the yellow sands in the sunlight before reaching the narrow pool. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and good day if you're tuned into this event on Sunday Showcase and the Mutual Audio Network feed. I am the host for the Sonic Summerstock Playhouse, David Alt. <laughs> Thank you. And what I began with was from the introductory paragraph of one of the most influential American writers and one of his most influential novels. I am speaking, of course, of John Steinbeck and his book of Mice and Men. Our feature tonight on the Summerstock stage is a recreation of the BBC production of the afternoon play of that novel. Our players are Pete Lutz and the Narada Radio Company, and from the best seats in the house here at the historic Halifax Playhouse, we ask your attention as the curtains open to begin our show. The following presentation is a production of 63 Audio and the Narada Radio Company, a proud member of the Mutual Audio Network. This is the BBC. Hello. It is just now four o'clock and time for our afternoon play. Today we present an adaptation of the classic novella of the American Depression of the 1930s, of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck, adapted as a play for broadcasting by Gilbert Thomas. Steinbeck published Of Mice and Men in 1937 and adapted it to a three-act play the same year. He was encouraged to do so and assisted by the man who would eventually direct the first Broadway production, George S. Kaufman. The play would go on to win the 1938 New York Drama Critics Circle Best Play Award. Of Mice and Men The play opens on the late afternoon of a hot Thursday on a sandy bank of the Salinas River in California. A little wind moves among the dry leaves. Two men come along, one after the other. The first, George Milton, a short, stocky man, drops his bundle on the ground. Then the next one, Lenny Small, a tall, lumbering man, follows suit and drops to his stomach at the water's edge. Lenny, for God's sake, don't drink so much. Lenny, you hear me? You're going to be sick like you was last night. <clears throat> That's good. You drink some, George. You drink some, too. I ain't sure it's good water. Looks kind of scummy to me. <laughs> Look at them wrinkles in the water, George. Look what I done. Tastes all right. Don't seem to be running much, though. 
Lenny, you oughtn't drink water when it ain't running. You drink water out of a gutter if you was thirsty. God damn it, we could just as well have rode clear to the ranch. That bus driver didn't know what he was talking about. Just a little stretch down the highway, he says. Just a little stretch. Damn near ten miles. Bet he didn't want to stop at the ranch gate. <sighs> um, just a little stretch down the road. George? Yeah, what do you want? Where are we going, George? So you forgot that already, did you? So I got to tell you again? Jeez, you're crazy. I forgot. I tried not to forget. Honest to God, I did. Okay, okay, I'll tell you again. I ain't got nothing to do. Might as well just spend all my tried. time telling you things. You forget them, and I tell no you again. Good. I remember about the rabbits, George. The hell with the rabbits. You can't remember nothing but them rabbits. You remember sitting in that gutter on Howard Street and watching that blackboard? Oh, sure. I, I remember that. Uh, but, but what did we do then? I remember some girls come by and you says... The hell with what I says. You remember about us going in Murray and Reddy's and they give us work cards and bus tickets? Oh, sure, George. <laughs> I remember that now. George? Huh. I ain't got mine. I must have lost it. You never had none. I got both of them here. Think I'd let you carry your own work card? Oh, I thought I'd put it in my side pocket. What'd you take out of that pocket? Ain't a thing in my pocket. I know there ain't. You got it in your hand now. What you got in your hand? I ain't got nothing, George. Honest. Come on, give it here. It, it's only a mouse. A mouse? A live mouse? No, a just a dead mouse. I didn't kill it. Honest, I found it. Found it dead. Give it here. Leave me have it, George. Give it here. What'd you want of a dead mouse anyway? I was petting it with my thumb while we walked along. Well, you ain't petting no mice while you walk with me. Now let's see if you can remember where we're going. Ugh! Oh, I forgot again. Jesus Christ. <sighs> well, look, we are going to work on a ranch like the one we come from up north. Up north? In weed? Oh, sure, I remember. In weed. That ranch we're going to is right down there about a quarter mile. We're going to go in and see the boss. And see the boss. Now look, I'll give him the work tickets, but you ain't going to say a word. You're just going to stand there and not say nothing. Not say nothing. If he finds out what a crazy bastard you are, we won't get no job. But if he sees you work before he hears you talk, we're set. You got that? Sure, George. Sure. I got that. Okay. Now, when we go in to see the boss, what you gonna do? I... I... I ain't gonna say nothing. Just gonna stand there. <sighs> Good boy. That's swell. Now say that over two or three times so you sure won't forget it. I ain't gonna say nothing. I ain't gonna say nothing. I and you ain't gonna do no bad things like you done in weed, neither. Like I done in weed? So you forgot that too, did you? <laughs> they run us out of weed. Run us out? Hell, we run. They was looking for us, but they didn't catch us. <laughs> I didn't forget that, you bet. <laughs> God, you're a lot of trouble. I could get along so easy and nice if I didn't have you on my tail. I could live so easy. 
We gonna work on a ranch, George. All right, you got that. But we're gonna sleep here tonight because well, I want to. I want to sleep out. Why ain't we going on to the ranch to get some supper? We got supper at the ranch. No reason at all. I just like it here. Tomorrow we'll be going to work. I've seen thrashing machines on the way down. That means we'll be bucking grain bags. Busting a gut lifting up them bags. Tonight I'm going to lay right here and look up. Tonight there ain't a grain bag or a boss in the world. Tonight... The drinks is on the house. Nice house we got here, Lenny. Ain't we gonna have no supper? Sure we are. You gather up some dead willow sticks. I got three cans of beans in my bindle. I'll open them up while you get a fire ready. We'll eat them cold. I like beans with ketchup. Well, we ain't got no ketchup. You go get wood and don't you fool around now. Be dark before long. All right, give me that mouse. What, George? I ain't got no mouse. Come on, give it to me. You ain't putting nothing over. You're going to give me that mouse or do I have to take a sock at you? Give you what, George? You know goddamn well what. I want that mouse. <laughs> I don't know why I can't keep it. It ain't nobody's mouse. I didn't steal it. I found it lying right beside the road. I wasn't doing nothing bad with it. Just stroking it. That ain't bad. Ah! You crazy fool. Thought you could get away with it, didn't you? Don't think I could see your feet was wet where you went in the water to get it? Blubbering like a baby. Jesus Christ, a big guy like you. Oh, Lenny, I ain't taking away just for meanness. That mouse ain't fresh. Besides, you broke it petting it. You get a mouse that's fresh, and I'll let you keep it for a while. I don't know where there's no other mouse. I remember a lady used to give them to me. Ever one she got, she used to give it to me. But that lady ain't here no more. Lady, huh? Give me them sticks there. Don't even remember who that lady was. That was your own Aunt Clara. She stopped giving them to you. You always killed them. They were so little. I pet them and pretty soon they bit my fingers and then I pinched their head a little bit and then they was dead because they were so little. I wish we'd get the rabbits pretty soon, George. They ain't so little. Hell with the rabbits. Come on, let's eat. There's enough beans for four men. I like him with ketchup. <sighs> well, we ain't got any. Whatever we ain't got, that's what you want. God almighty, if I was alone, I could live so easy. I could go get a job of work in no trouble. No mess. And when the end of the month come, I can take my 50 bucks and go into town and get whatever I want. Why, I could stay in a cat house all night. I, I could eat any place I want, want order no any damn up. thing. I could do that every damn month. Get a gallon of whiskey or set up in a pool room and play cards or shoot pool. What have I got? I got you. You can't keep a job and you lose me at every job I get. I don't mean nothing, George. Just keep me shoving all over the country all the time. And that ain't the worst. You, you get in trouble. You do bad things and I gotta get you out. It ain't bad people to raise as hell, it's dumb ones. You crazy son of a bitch, you keep me in hot water all the time. You just want to feel that girl's dress. 
You just want to pet it like it was a mouse. Well, how the hell does she know you just want to feel her dress? How does she know you just hold on to it like a, it was a mouse? I didn't mean to, George. Sure, you didn't mean to. You didn't mean for her to yell bloody hell either. You didn't mean for us to hide in the irrigation ditch all day with guys out looking for us with guns. All the time, it's something you didn't mean. God damn it, I wish I could put you in a cage with a million mice and let them pet you. George? George? What do you want? I was only fooling, George. I don't want no ketchup. I wouldn't eat no ketchup if it was right here beside me. Stay with some here, you could have it. And buy it a thousand bucks, and buy you a bunch of flowers. I wouldn't eat no ketchup, George. I'd leave it all for you. You could cover your being so deep with it, and I wouldn't touch none of it. When I think of the swell time I could have without you, I go nuts. Never get no peace. You you want I should go away and leave you alone? Where the hell could you go? Well, I could, uh... I could go off in the hills there. Someplace I could find a cave. Yeah? How'd you eat? You ain't got sense enough to find nothing to eat. I'd find things. I, I don't need no nice food with ketchup. I'd lay out in the sun when nobody would hurt me. And if I found a mouse, why, I could keep it. Wouldn't nobody take it away from me. I've been mean, ain't I? Look, I was just fooling you. Of course I want you to stay with me. Trouble with mice is you always kill them. Tell you what I'll do, Lenny. First chance I get, I'll find you a pup. That would be better than mice. You could pet it harder. If you don't want me, I'll go right up on them hills and live by myself. And I won't get no mice stole from me. I want you to stay with me. Jesus Christ, somebody would shoot you for a coyote if you was by yourself. Stay with me. Your Aunt Claire wouldn't like you running off by yourself, even if she is dead. George? Huh. Tell me. Like you done before. Tell you what? About the rabbits. <sighs> you ain't gonna put nothing over on me. Come on, George. Tell me. Please. Like you done before. You get a kick out of that, don't you? All right, I'll tell you. Now we'll lay on our beds and eat our supper. Go on, George. <sighs> guys like us that work on ranches is the loneliest guys in the world. They ain't got no family. They don't belong no place. They come to a ranch and work up a stake, and then they go into town and blow it. And then the first thing you know, they're pounding their tail on some other ranch. They ain't got nothing to look ahead to. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Now tell how it is with us. With us, it ain't like that. We got a future. We got somebody to talk to that gives a damn about us. We don't have to sit in no bar room spending our jack just because we got no place else to go. If them other guys gets in jail, they can rot for all anybody gives a damn. But not us! <laughs> Why? Because... Because I got you to look after me. And you got me to look after you. And that's why. <laughs> Come on, George. You got it by heart. You can do it yourself. No, oh, no. I forget some of this stuff. Tell about how it's going to be. Some other time. No, tell how it's going to be. Okay. 
Someday we're going to get the jack together and we're going to have a little house. And a couple of acres and a cow and some pigs. And, and live off the fat of the land. <laughs> and have rabbits. Go on, George. Tell about what we're going to have in the garden. And about the rabbits in the cages. Tell about the rain in the winter and and about the stove and how thick the cream is on the milk. You can hardly cut it. Tell about that, George. Why don't you do it yourself? You know all of it. It ain't the same if I tell it. Go on now. How I get to tend the rabbits. <sighs> well, we'll have a big vegetable patch and our rabbit hutch and chicken. And when it rains in the winter, we'll just say to hell with going to work. We'll build up a fire in the stove and sit around it and listen to the rain coming down on the roof. Nuts. I ain't got time for no more. What you gonna say tomorrow when the boss asks you questions? I... I ain't gonna say a word. Good boy. That's fine. Hey, maybe you're getting better. But I can let you tend to the rabbits. Especially if you remember as good as that. I can remember, by God! <laughs> Lenny, I want you to look around here. You think you can remember this place? The ranch is about a quarter mile up that way. Just follow the river and you can get here. Sure, I can remember here. Didn't I remember about not gonna say a word? Of course you did. Well, look, Lenny, if, if you just happen to get in trouble, I want you to come right here and hide in the brush. Hide in the brush. Hide in the brush until I come for you. Think you can remember that? Sure I can, George. Hide in the brush Till you come for me. But you ain't gonna get in no trouble. Because if you do, I won't let you tend the rabbits. I won't get in no trouble. I ain't gonna say a word. You got it. Anyways, I hope so. It's gonna be nice sleeping here. Looking up from the leaves. Don't build up no more fire. We'll let her die. Jesus, you feel free when you ain't got a job. If you ain't hungry. <laughs> George. What do you want? Let's have different color rabbits, George. <laughs> sure. Red rabbits and blue rabbits and green rabbits. <laughs> Millions of them. Furry ones, George. Like I've seen at the fair in Sacramento. Sure, furry ones. Because I can just as well go away, George, to live in a cave. Ah, shut up. George? What is it? I'm shutting up, George. This is the bunkhouse here. Doors around this side. The boss was expecting you last night. He was sore as hell when you wasn't here to go out this morning. Uh, you can have them two beds there. I'll take the top one, Lenny. I don't want you falling down on me. Say, what the hell is this? Well, I don't know. It says, positively kills lice, roaches, and other scourges? 
What the hell kind of bed you giving us anyway? We don't want no pants rabbits. Hmm, let me see that. Well, tell you what, last guy that had this bed was a blacksmith. Hell of a nice fella. Clean a guy as you'd want to meet. Used to wash his hands even after he yet. <laughs> and how come he got pillow pigeons? <laughs> tell you what, this here blacksmith named Whitey was the kind of guy that would put stuff around even if there wasn't no bugs. Tell you what he used to do. He'd peel his boiled potatoes and take out every little spot before he ate it. And if there was a red splotch on an egg, he'd scrape it off. Finally quit about the food. That's the kind of guy Whitey was. Clean. Used to dress up Sundays even when he wasn't going no place. Put on a necktie even. And then set it in the bunkhouse. Mm, I ain't so sure. What'd you say he quit for? Why... He just quit the way a guy will. Says it was the food. Didn't give no other reason. Just says, give me my time one night, the way any guy would. Well, if there's any graybacks in this bed, you're going to hear from me. Uh, I guess the boss will be out here in a minute to write your name in. He sure was burned when you wasn't here this morning. Come right in when we was eating breakfast and says, where the hell's them new men? He gave the stable buck hell, too. Stable Buck's a black fella named Crooks. Yeah? Yeah. Nice fella, too. Got a crooked back where a horse kicked him. Boss gives him hell when he's mad, but the Stable Buck don't give a damn about that. What kind of guy is the boss? Well, he's a pretty nice fella for a boss. Gets mad sometimes, but he's pretty nice. Tell you what, know what he done Christmas? Brung a gallon of whiskey right in here and says... Drink hearty, boys. Christmas comes but once a year. The hell he did? A whole gallon? Yes, sir. Jesus, we had fun. They let crooks come in that night. Well, sir, a little skitter named Smitty took after him. Done pretty good, too. The guys wouldn't let him use his feet, so crooks got him. If he could have used his feet, Smitty says he would have killed crooks. The guy says on account of the, the black feller got a crooked back, Smitty can't use his feet. <laughs> Lost the owner? Nah. Superintendent. Big land company. Yes, sir. That night, he come right in here with a whole gallon. He said right over there and says, Drink hearty, boys. <laughs> he says, Oh, hi, boss. Them guys just come. See you later. I wrote Murray and Reddy. I wanted two men this morning. You got your work slips? Here they are. Well, I see it wasn't Murray and Reddy's fault. It says right here on the slip you was to be here for work this morning. Bus driver gave us a bum steer. We had to walk 10 miles. That bus driver says we was here when we wasn't. We couldn't thumb no rides. Well, I had to send out the grain team short two buckers. It won't do any good to go out now until after dinner. You'd get lost. What's your name? George Milton. George Milton. And what's yours? His name's Lenny Small. Lenny Small. Let's see. This is the 20th, noon the 20th. Where you boys been working? Up around Weed. Hmm, you too? Yeah, him too. Say, you're a big fellow, ain't you? Yeah, he can work like hell too. He ain't much of a talker though, is he? No, he ain't. But he's a hell of a good worker. Strong as a bull. I'm strong as a bull. You are, huh? What can you do? He can do anything. <laughs> what can you do? He, anything you tell him. He's a, he's a good skinner. He can wrestle grain bags, drive a cultivator. He can do anything. Just give him a try. Then why don't you let him answer? <laughs> What's he laughing about? He laughs when he gets excited. Yeah. But he's a goddamn good worker. I ain't saying he's bright because he ain't. 
but he can put up a 400-pound bail. Say, what you selling? Huh? I said, what stake you got in this guy? Are you taking his pay away from him? No, of course I ain't. Well, I never seen one guy take up so much for another guy. I'd just like to know what your percentage is. He's my cousin. I told his old lady I'd take care of him. He got kicked in the head by a horse when he was a kid. He's all right, just ain't bright. But he can do anything you tell him. Well, God knows you don't need no brains to buck barley bags. But don't you try to put nothing over, Milton. I got my eye on you. Why'd you quit and weed? Job was done. What kind of job? Why, uh, we, we was digging a cesspool. All right. But don't try to put nothing over because you can't get away with nothing. I've seen wise guys before. Go out with the grain teams after dinner. They're out picking up barley with the thrashing machines. Go out with Slim's team. Slim? Yeah. Big, tall Skinner. You'll see him at dinner. Been on the road long? We was three days in Frisco looking at the boards. Didn't go to no nightclubs, I suppose. We was looking for a job. Oh, it's a great town if you got a little jack, Frisco. We didn't have no jack for nothing like that. Uh, all right. Go out with the green teams after dinner. When my hands work hard, they get pie. And when they loaf, they bounce down the road on their can. If you ask anybody about me. So you wasn't going to say a word. You was going to leave your big flapper shut. I was going to do the talking. You goddamn near lost us the job. I forgot. You forgot. You always forget. Now he's got his eye on us. Now we got to be careful and not make those slips. You keep your big flapper shut after this. He talked like a kind of nice guy towards the last. He's the boss, ain't he? Well, he's the boss first and a nice guy afterwards. Don't you have nothing to do with no boss except do your work and draw your pay. You can't never tell whether you're talking to the nice guy or the boss. Just keep your goddamn mouth shut. Then you're all right. George? What you want now? I wasn't kicked in the head with no horse, was I, George? Be a damn good thing if you was. Save everybody a hell of a lot of trouble. You says I was your cousin. Well, that was a goddamn lie, and I'm glad it was. Well, if I was a relative of yours... Say, what the hell are you doing listening? Uh, uh, no, nah, I wasn't listening. I was just standing in the shade a minute, scratching my dog. I just now finished swamping out the wash house. You was poking your big nose into our business. I don't like nosy guys. I just come there. I didn't hear nothing you guys was saying. I ain't interested in nothing you was saying. A guy on a ranch don't never listen. Nor he don't ask no questions. Damn right he don't. Not if the guy wants to stay working long. That's a hell of an old dog. Yeah, I had him ever since he was a pup. God, he was a good sheep dog when he was young. How'd you like the boss? Pretty good. Seemed all right. He's a nice fella. You got to take him right, of course. He's running this ranch. He don't take no nonsense. What time do we eat? 11.30? Mm. Hey. Seen my old man? He was here just a minute ago, Curly. Went over to the cookhouse, I think. I'll try to catch him. You the new guys my old man was waiting for? Yeah, we just come in. How's it come you wasn't here this morning? Got off the bus too soon. My old man got to get the grain out. Ever bucked barley? Hell yes, done a lot of it. I mean him. Ever bucked barley? Sure he has. Let the big guy talk. Suppose he don't want to talk. Why Christ, he's got to talk when he spoke to. What the hell are you shoving into this for? 
him and me travel together. And you won't let the big guy talk? Is that it? He can talk if he wants to tell you anything. We just come in. Well, the next time you answer when you spoke to them. He didn't do nothing to you. You drawing cards this hand? I might. I'll see you get a chance to ante anyway. Say, what the hell's he got on his shoulder? Lenny didn't say nothing to him. That's the boss's son. Curly's pretty handy. He done quite a bit in the ring. The guys say he's pretty handy. Well, let him be handy. You don't have to take after Lenny. Lenny didn't do nothing to him. Well, tell you what. Curly's like a lot of little guys. He hates big guys. He's all the time picking scraps with big guys. Kind of like he's mad at him because he ain't a big guy. You see little guys like that, ain't you? Always scrappy? Sure, I seen plenty of tough little guys. But this here Curly better not make no mistakes about Lenny. Lenny ain't handy, see, but this Curly punk's gonna get hurt if he messes around with Lenny. Well, Curly's pretty handy. You know, it never did seem right to me. Suppose Curly jumps a big guy and licks him. Everybody says what a game guy Curly is. Well, suppose he jumps him and gets licked. Everybody says the big guy ought to pick somebody his own size. Seems like Curly ain't giving nobody a chance. Well, he better watch out for Lenny. Lenny ain't no fighter, but Lenny's strong and quick, and Lenny don't know no rules. Don't tell Curly I said none of this. He'd slough me. He just don't give a damn. Won't ever get canned because his old man's the boss. This guy Curly sounds like a son of a bitch to me. I don't like mean little guys. Seems to me like he's worse lately. He got married a couple weeks ago. Wife lives over in the boss's house. Seems like Curly's worse than ever since he got married. Like he's sitting on an ant hill and a big red ant come up and nipped him on the turnip. Just feels so goddamn miserable he'll strike at anything that moves. I'm kind of sorry for him. Maybe he's showing off for his wife. You seen that glove on his left hand? Sure, I seen it. Well, that glove's full of Vaseline. Vaseline? What the hell for? Curly says he's keeping that hand soft for his wife. Ugh, that's a dirty kind of thing to tell around. I ain't quite so sure. I seen such funny things a guy will try to do to be nice. I ain't sure. But you just wait till you see Curly's wife. Is she pretty? Yeah. Pretty, but... But what? Well, she's got the eye. Yeah? Married two weeks and got the eye? Maybe that's why Curly's pants is full of ants. Yes, sir. I seen her give Slim the eye. Slim's a jerkline skinner. Hell of a nice fella. And I seen her give a skinner named Carlson the eye. Curly never seen it. Looks like we're going to have fun. Know what I think? Well, I think Curly's married himself a tart. He ain't the first. Yes, sir, there's plenty done that. Well, I gotta be setting out the wash basins for the guys. The teams will be in before long. You guys gonna buck barley? Yeah. You won't tell Curly nothing I said. Hell no. Okay. Look, Lenny, this here ain't no setup. You're going to have trouble with that curly guy. I've seen that kind before. You know what he's doing? He's, he's kind of feeling you out. He figures he's got you scared, and he's going to take a sock at you first chance he gets. I don't want no trouble. Don't let him sock me, George. I hate them kind of bastards. I've seen plenty of them. If he tangles with you, Lenny, we're going to get the can. Don't make no mistake about that. He's the boss's kid. Look, you try to keep away from him, will you? Don't never speak to him. If he comes in here, you move clear to the other side of the room. Will you remember that, Lenny? I don't want no trouble. I never done nothing to him. Well, that won't do you no good if Curly wants to fight. Just don't have nothing to do with him. Will you remember? Sure, George. 
I ain't gonna say a word. Stable book. Stable book. Hey, hey, stable. Stable book. Here come the guys. Just don't say nothing. You ain't mad, George. I ain't mad at you. I'm mad at this here curly bastard. I wonder we should get a little steak together. Maybe a hundred dollars. You keep away from Curly. Sure, I will. I won't say a word. Don't let him pull you in. But if the son of a bitch socks you, let him have it. Let him have what, George? Never mind. Look, if you get into any kind of trouble, you remember what I told you to do. If I get in any trouble, you ain't gonna let me tend the rabbits? That's not what I mean. You remember where we slept last night, down by the river? Oh, sure, I remember. I, I go there and hide in the brush until you come for me. That's it. Hide till I come for you. Don't let nobody see you. Hide in the brush by the river. Now say that over. Hide in the brush by the river. Down in the brush by the river. If you get in trouble. If I get in trouble. Stable buck. Ooh, stable buck. <clears throat> I'm looking for Curly. <clears throat> he was in here a minute ago, but he went along. You're the new fellas that just come, ain't you? Yeah. Sometimes Curly's in here. Well, he ain't now. Well, if he ain't, I guess I better look someplace else. If I see Curly, I'll pass the word you was looking for him. No, nobody can't blame a person for looking. That depends what she's looking for. I'm just looking for somebody to talk to. Don't you never just want to talk to somebody? Okay, put that lead pair in the north stall. Hi, Slim. Hello. I I'm trying to find Curly. Well, you ain't trying very hard. I seen him going in your house. Well, I gotta be going. Jesus, what a tramp. So that's what Curly picks for a wife? God almighty, do you smell that stink she's got on? I could still smell her. Don't have to see or her to know she's around. She's pretty. Yeah, and she's sure hiding it. Curly's got his work ahead of him. Gosh, she's pretty. Listen to me, you crazy bastard. Don't you even look at that bitch. I don't care what she says or what she does. I seen him poison before, but I ain't never seen no piece of jail bait worse than her. Don't you even smell near her. I never smelled, George. No, you never. But when she was standing there showing her legs, you wasn't looking the other way, neither. I never meant no bad things, George. Honest. I never. Well, you keep away from her. You let Curly take the rap. He let himself in for it. Glub full of Vaseline. Bet he's eating raw eggs and writing to patent medicine houses. I don't like this place. This ain't no good place. I don't like this place. Listen, I don't like it here no better than you do. But we gotta keep it till we get a steak. We're flat. We gotta get a steak. If we can just get a few dollars in the poke, we'll shove off and go up to the American River and pan gold. Guy can make a couple of dollars a day there. Let's go, George. Let's get out of here. It's mean here. I tell you, we got to stay a little while. We got to get a steak. Shut up now. The guys will be coming in. Maybe we ought to wash up. But hell, we ain't done nothing to get dirty. It's brighter than a bitch outside. Ain't hard to see nothing in here. You the new guys? Just come. Going to Buck Barley? That's what the boss says. I hope you get on my team. Boss said we'd go with a jerkline skinner named Slim. That's me. You a jerkline skinner? Yeah, I can snap him around a little. <sighs> it kind of makes you Jesus Christ on this ranch, don't it? Oh, nuts. <laughs> like the man says, the boss tells you what to do, but if you want to know how to do it, you got to ask the mule skinner. Man says any guy that can drive 12 Arizona jackrabbits with a jerk line can fall in a toilet, come up with a mince pie under each arm. <laughs> well, I hope you get on my team. 
I got a pair of punks that don't know a barley bag from a blue ball. You guys ever buck barley? Hell yes. I ain't nothing to scream about, but that big guy there can put up more grain alone than most pears can. You guys travel around together? Sure. We kind of look after each other. He ain't bright. Hell of a good worker, though. Hell of a nice fella, too. I knowed him for a long time. Need many guys travel around together. I don't know why. Maybe everybody in the whole damn world's scared of each other. It's a lot nicer to go around with a guy you know. You get used to it, and then it, it ain't no fun alone anymore. Hello, Slim. These guys just come. Hmm. Glad to meet you. My name's Carlson. I'm George Milton. This here Lenny Small. Glad to meet you. Hmm. He, he ain't very small. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he ain't small at all. Um, uh, meant to ask you, Slim, how's your bitch? I seen she wasn't under your wagon this morning. Yeah, she slung her pups last night. Nine of them. I drowned four of them right off. She couldn't feed that many. Hmm. Got five left, huh? Yeah, five. I kept the biggest. Uh, what kind of dogs do you think they're going to be? I don't know. Some kind of shepherd, I guess. That's the most kind of seen around here when she's in heat. <laughs> uh, I had an Airedale, and a guy down the road got one of them oh, little white floozy dogs. Well, she was in heat, and the guy locks her up. But my Airedale, uh, named Tom he was, he had a woodshed clear down to the roots to get to her. <laughs> guy come over one day, sore as hell, he says, I wouldn't mind if my bitch had pups, but Christ almighty, this morning she slung a litter of Shetland ponies. <laughs> oh, ah, got five pups, huh? Hmm, gonna keep all of them? I don't know. We gotta keep a while so they can drink Lulu's milk. Well, look at here, Slim. I've been thinking. That dog of candies is so goddamn old, he can't hardly walk. Stinks like hell. Every time Candy brings him in the bunkhouse, I can smell him two or three days. Why don't you get Candy to shoot his old dog and give him one of the pups to raise up? I can smell that dog a mile off. It's got no teeth. It, it, it can't eat. Candy feeds him milk. He can't chew nothing else. And lead him around on a string so he don't bump into things. Oh, there she goes. You guys better come on while there's still something to eat. Won't be nothing left in a couple of minutes. George! Yeah, I heard him, Lenny. I'll ask him. A, a brown and white one? Come on, let's get dinner. I don't know whether he's got a brown and white one. You ask him right away, George, so he won't kill no more of them. Sure. Come on now, let's go. Hey! You seen a girl around here? About a half hour ago, maybe. Well, what the hell was she doing? She said she was looking for you. Hmm. Which way did she go? I don't know. I didn't watch her go. Hmm. You know, Lenny, I'm scared I'm going to tangle with that bastard myself. I hate his guts. Jesus Christ, come on. There won't be a damn thing left to eat. Will you ask him about a brown and white one? Oh, that's a good one. Goddamn right it's a good one. Here goes for a ringer, boy. I need a ringer. Goddamn, you got it, too. Ah, it wasn't nothing. I would have had to drown most of them pups anyway. No need to thank me about that. Well, it wasn't much to you, maybe, but it was a hell of a lot to him. Jesus Christ, I don't know how we're going to get him to sleep in here. They want to stay right out in the barn. We're going to have trouble keeping him from getting right in the box with them pups. Say, you sure was right about him. Maybe he ain't bright, but I never seen such a worker. 
He damn near killed his partner, Buck and Barley. He'd take his end of that sack and, geez, pretty near kill his partner. God almighty, I never seen such a strong guy. You just tell Lenny what to do and he'll do it if it don't take no figuring. If I can win the goddamn game, me either. You think them shoes is ample. Funny how you and him string along together. <sighs> What's so funny about it? No, I don't know. Hardly none of the guys ever travels around together. I hardly never seen two guys travel together. You know how the hands are. They come in, they get their bunk and work a month, and then, then they quit and go on alone. Never seem to give a damn about nobody. Just seems kind of funny, a cuckoo like him and a smart guy like you traveling together. I ain't so bright neither. I wouldn't be bucking barley for my 50 and found. If I was bright, if I was even a little bit smart, I'd have my own place. And I'd be bringing in my own crops instead of doing all the work and not getting what comes up out of the ground. God like to do that. Sometime I'd like to cuss a string of mules that was my own mule. It ain't so funny, him and me going round together. Him and me was both born in Auburn. I know his aunt. She took him when he was a baby and raised him up. When his aunt died, Lenny just come along with me, out working. Got kind of used to each other after a little while. Uh-huh. First, I used to have a hell of a lot of fun with him. Used to play jokes on him because he was too dumb to take care of himself. But hell, he was too dumb to even know when he had a joke played on him. Hell yes, I had fun. Made me seem goddamn smart alongside of him. I seen it that way. Why, well, he'd do any damn thing I told him. If I told him to walk over a cliff, over he'd go. You know, that wasn't so much fun after a while. He never got mad about it, neither. I beat hell out of him, and he could bust every bone in my body just with his hands. But he never lifted a finger against me. Even if you socked him, wouldn't he? No, by God. I'll tell you what made me stop playing jokes. One day, a bunch of guys were standing around up on the Sacramento River. I was feeling pretty smart. I turned to Lenny and I says, jump in. What happened? He jumps. Couldn't swim a stroke. He damn near drowned. And he was so nice to me for pulling him out. Clean forgot I told him to jump in. Well, I ain't done nothing like that no more. Makes me kind of sick telling about it. He's a nice fella. Guy don't need no sense to be a nice fella. Seems to be sometimes it's just the other way around. Take a real smart guy. He ain't hardly ever a nice fella. I ain't got no people. I've seen guys that go around on the ranches alone. That ain't no good. They don't have no fun. After a while, they get mean. Yeah, I've seen them get mean. I've seen them get so they don't want to talk to nobody. Some ways they got to. You take a bunch of guys all live in one room, and by God, they got to mind their own business. About the only private thing a guy's got is where he come from and where he's going. Of course, Lenny is a goddamn nuisance most of the time. But you get used to going around with a guy, you can't get rid of him. I mean, you get used to him, and you can't get rid of being used to him. <laughs> I'm sure dripping at the mouth. I ain't told nobody all this before. Do you want to get rid of him? Well, he gets in trouble all the time. Because he's so goddamn dumb. Like what happened to Weed. <clears throat> you wouldn't tell nobody? What did he do in weed? You wouldn't tell? No, of course you wouldn't. What did he do? Well, he seen this girl in a red dress. Dumb bastard like he is, he wants to touch everything he likes. He just wants the feel of it. So he reaches out to feel this red dress. Girl lets out a squawk and that gets Lenny all mixed up. He holds on because it's the only thing he can think to do. The hell? Well, this girl squawks her head off. I'm right close and I hear all the yelling, so I comes a running. By that time, Lenny's scared to death. Y you know, I had to sock him over the head with a fence picket to make him let go. Uh, so what happens then? Well, she runs in and tells the law that she's been raped. The guys in weed start out to lynch Lenny. So there we sit in an irrigation ditch, underwater all the rest of the day. Got only our heads sticking out of the water, up under the grass that grows out of the side of the ditch. 
That night we run out of there. It didn't hurt the girl none, huh? Hell no, he just scared her. He's a funny guy. Funny? <laughs> Why, one time you know what that big baby done? He was walking along the road. Hi, Lenny. How you like your pup? He's he's brown and white, just like I wanted. Lenny. Huh? What you want, George? I told you, you couldn't bring that pup in here. What pup, George? I ain't got no pup. Oh, give him to me, George. You get right up and take this pup to the nest. He's got to sleep with his mother. You want to kill him? Just born last night and you take him out of the nest. You take him back or I'll tell Slim not to let you have him. Give him to me, George. I'll take him back. I didn't mean no bad thing, George. Honest, I didn't. I just want to pet him a little. All right. You get him back there quick, and don't you take him out no more. Jesus, he's just like a kid, ain't he? Sure he's like a kid. There ain't no more harm in him than a kid, neither. Except he's so strong. I bet he won't come in here to sleep tonight. He'll sleep right alongside that box in the barn. We'll let him. He ain't doing no harm out there. <laughs> Hello, Slim. Hello, George. Don't neither of you play horseshoes? I don't like to play every night. Mm. Either of you guys got a slug of whiskey? I got a gut ache. I ain't. I'd drink it myself if I had. And I ain't got no gut ache either. Goddamn cabbage, give it to me. I know it was going to before I ever had it. Oh. Jesus, how that black SOB can pitch shoes. He's plenty good. Damn right he is. Yeah, and he don't give anybody else a chance to win. Oh, God almighty, that dog stinks. Get him out of here, Candy. I, I don't know nothing that stinks as bad as old dogs. God, you gotta get him out of here. Ooh, I've been round him so much I never notice how he stinks. Well, I can't stand him in here. That stink hangs around even after he's gone. Man, got no teeth. All stiff with rheumatism. He ain't no good to you, Candy. Why don't you shoot him? Well, hell, I, I had him so long. Had him since he was a pup. I herded sheep with him. You wouldn't think it to look at him now. He was the best damn sheep dog I ever seen. I know the guy in weed that had an Airedale that could herd sheep. Learned it from the other dogs. Look at Candy. This old dog just suffers itself all the time. If you was to take him out and shoot him right in the back of the head, right here, why, he'd never know what hit him. No, no, I couldn't do that. I had him too long. Uh, he doesn't have no fun no more. He stinks like hell. Tell you what I'll do. I'll shoot him for you. Then it won't be you that done it. I, I had him from a pub. Let him blown, Carl. It ain't a guy's dog that matters. It's the way the guy feels about the dog. Uh, hell, I had a mutt once I wouldn't have traded for a field trial pointer. Well, Candy ain't being nice to him keeping him alive. Look it, Slim's bitch got a litter right now. I bet you Slim would give you one of them pups to raise up, wouldn't you, Slim? Yeah, you can have a pup if you want to. Well, maybe it would hurt. And I don't mind taking care of him. Ah, uh, he'd be better off dead. The way I'd shoot him, he wouldn't feel nothing. I put the gun right there, right back of the head. Oh, let him loan, Carl. Why, hell, he wouldn't even quiver. Let him loan. Say, did you see this? Did, did you see this in this book here? See what? Right there. Read that. I don't want to read nothing. It'll be all over in a minute, Candy. Come on. 
Uh, did you see it, Slim? Go on, read it. Read it out loud. What is it? Read it. Dear Editor, I read your mag for six years, and I think it is the best on the market. I like stories by Peter Rand. I think he is a winged dean. Give us more like the Dark Rider. I don't write many letters. Just thought I would tell you I think your mag is the best dime's worth I ever spent. What you want me to read that for? Go on, read the name at the bottom. Yours for success, William Tenner. Well, what you want me to read that for? Come on, Candy, what do you say? You don't remember Bill Tenner. Worked here about three months ago. Little guy? Uh, drove a cultivator? That's him, that's the guy. Look, Candy, if you want me to, I'll put the old devil out of his misery right now and get it over with. There ain't nothing left for him. Can't eat, can't see, can't hardly walk. Tomorrow you can pick one of Slim's pups. Sure, I got a lot of them. You ain't got no gun. The hell I ain't. Got a Luger. It won't hurt him none at all. Maybe tomorrow. Let's wait till tomorrow. I don't see no reason for it. Let's get it over with. We can't sleep with him stinking around in here. Better let him go, Candy. All right. Take him. Oh, come on, boy. Come on, boy. He won't even feel it. Come on, boy. That's the stuff. Come on. Carlson? Yeah. Take a shovel. Oh, yeah, sure, I get you. One of my lead mules got a bad hoof. Got to get some tar on it. Anybody like to play a little euchre? I'll lay out a few with you. Candy, you can have any of them pups you want. <sighs> Sounds like there was a rat under there. We ought to set a trap there. What the hell is taking him so long? Lay out some cards, why don't you? We ain't gonna get no euchre played this way. Well, let's get to it. Yeah, I, I... I guess you guys really come here to work, huh? How do you mean? <laughs> well, you come on a Friday and you got two days to work till Sunday. I don't see how you figure. You do if you've been around these big ranches much. Guy that wants to look over a ranch comes in on Saturday afternoon. Gets Saturday night supper, three meals on a Sunday, and then he can quit on Monday morning after breakfast without turning a hand. But you come in on Friday noon. You got to put in a day and a half no matter how you figure it. We're going to stick around a while. Me and Lenny's going to roll up a steak. Mr. Slim? Huh? Oh, hello, Crooks. Uh, what's the matter? You told me to warm up tar for that mule's foot. I got to warm now. Oh, sure, Crooks. I'll come right out and put it on. I can do it for you if you want, Mr. Slim. No, I'll take care of my own team. Mr. Slim? Yeah? That big new guy is messing around your pups in the barn. Well, he ain't doing no harm. I give him one of them pups. Just thought I'd tell you. He's taking them out of the nest and handling them. That won't do him no good. Oh, he won't hurt them. If that crazy bastard is fooling around too much, just kick him out. Seen the new kid yet? What kid? Why, Curly's new wife. Yeah, I seen her. Well, ain't she a Lulu? I ain't seen that much of her. Well, you stick around and keep your eyes open. You'll see plenty of her. I never seen nobody like her. 
She's just working on everybody all the time. Seems like she's even working on the stable, but I don't know what the hell she wants. Been any trouble since you got here? And I see what you mean. No, there ain't been no trouble yet. She's only been here a couple of weeks. Curly's got yellow jackets in his drawers, but that's all so far. Every time the guy is around, she shows up. She's looking for Curly. Or she thought she'd left something laying around, and she's looking for that. Well, it seems like she can't keep away from guys. Curly's running around like a cat looking for a dirt road. But there ain't been no trouble. Ranch with a bunch of guys on it ain't no place for a girl. Especially like her. Well, if she's give you any ideas, you ought to come to town with us guys tomorrow night. Why? What's doing? Well, just the usual thing. We go into old Susie's place. A hell of a nice place. Old Susie's a laugh. Always cracking jokes. Like she says, when we come up on the front porch last Saturday night, Susie opens the doors and yells over her shoulder, Get your coats on, girls. Here comes the sheriff. She never talks dirty, neither. Got five girls there. What does it set you back? Mm, two and a half. You can get a shot of whiskey for 15 cents. Susie's got nice chairs to sit in, too. And if a guy don't want to flop, why, he can just sit in them chairs and have a couple or three shots and just pass the time of day. Susie don't give a damn. She ain't rushing guys through, kicking them out if they don't want to flop. Hmm. Mm. Might go in and look the joint over. Sure, come along. It's a hell of a lot of fun. Her cracking jokes all the time. Like she says one time, she says, I knew people, if they got a rag rug on the floor and a cupid doll lamp on the phonograph, they think they're running a parlor house. That's Gladys's house she's talking about. And Susie says, I, I know what you boys want, she says. My girl's clean, she says. And there ain't no water in my whiskey, she says. If any of you guys want to look at cupid doll lamp, take your chance of getting burned, why, you know where to go. She says this guy's around here walking bowleg because they like to look at a cupid doll lamp. <laughs> Gladys runs the other house, huh? Yeah. <sighs> God, it's a dark night. We don't never go to Gladys's. Gladys gets three bucks. Two bits a shot, she don't crack no jokes. And Susie's place is clean. She's got nice chairs. Guy can sit in there like he lived there. Oh, I don't know. Me and Lenny's rolling up a steak. I might go in and sit and have a shot, but I ain't putting out no two and a half. Well, a guy got to have fun sometimes. Didn't bring him back in, did you, Lenny? No, George. Honest, I didn't. <laughs> See? Say, how about this Euchre game? <laughs> okay. I didn't think you wanted to play. Have you guys seen my wife? She ain't been here. Where the hell's Slim? Went out in the barn. He was going to put some tar on a split hoof. How long ago did he go? Oh, five, ten minutes. Ugh. Well, I guess maybe I'd like to see this. Curly must be spoiling or he wouldn't start for Slim. Curly's handy, goddamn handy. But just the same, you better leave Slim alone. Thinks Slim's with his wife, don't he? Looks like it. Of course, Slim ain't. At least I don't think Slim is. But I'd like to see the fuss if it comes off. Come on, let's go. I don't want to get mixed up in nothing. Me and Lenny got to make a steak. I'll look her over. Ain't seen a good fight in a hell of a while. You see Slim out in the barn? Sure. He told me I better not pet that pup no more, like I said. Did you see that girl out there? You mean Curly's girl? Yeah. Did she come in the barn? No. Anyway, I never seen her. You never seen Slim talking to her? Uh-uh. 
can't been in the barn. Okay. Guess them guys ain't gonna see no fight. If there's any fighting money, you get out of the way and stay out. I don't want no fight. Both ends the same. What? The cards. George, why is it both ends the same? I don't know. That's just the way they make them. What was Slim doing in the barn when you seen him? Slim? Sure, you seen him in the barn. He told you not to pet the pup so much. Oh, yeah. He had a can of tar and a paintbrush. I don't know what for. You sure that girl didn't come in like she come in here today? No, she never come. <sighs> you give me a good cat house every time. A guy can go in and get drunk and get it over all at once and no messes. And he knows how much it's going to set him back. These tarts is just buckshot to a guy. You remember Andy Cushman, Lenny? Went to grammar school same time as us. The one that his old lady used to make hot cakes for the kids? Yeah, that's the one. You can remember if there's something to eat in it. Well, Andy's at San Quentin right now on account of a tart. George? Huh? How long is it going to be till we get that little place to live on the fat of the land? I don't know. We got to get a big steak together. I know a little place we can get cheap, but they ain't giving it away. Tell about that place, George. I just told you. Just last night. Go on. Tell again. Well, it's ten acres. Got a little windmill. Got a little shack on it and a chicken run. Got a kitchen orchard. Cherries, apples, peaches, apricots, and nuts. Got a few berries. There's a place for alfalfa and plenty of water to flood it. There's a pig pen. And rabbits, George? I could easy build a few hutches, and you could feed alfalfa to them rabbits. Damn right I could. You goddamn right I could. And we could have a few pigs. i build a smokehouse, and when we kill a pig, we could smoke the hams. And when the salmon run up the river, we could catch a hundred of them. Every Sunday, we'd kill a chicken or rabbit. Maybe we'll have a cow or a goat. And the cream is so goddamn thick, you gotta cut it off the pan with a knife. We can live off the fat of the land. Sure. All kinds of vegetables in the garden. And if we want a little whiskey, we can sell some eggs or something. And we wouldn't sleep in no bunkhouse. Nobody could can us in the middle of a job. Tell about the house, George. Sure, we'd have a little house and a room to ourselves. And it ain't enough land, so we'd have to work too hard. Maybe six, seven hours a day only. We wouldn't have to bug no barley 11 hours a day. And when we put in a crop, why, we'd be there to take that crop up. We'd know what come of our planting. And rabbits. And I'd take care of them. Tell how i do that, George. Sure. You'd go out in the alfalfa patch and you'd have a sack. You'd fill up the sack and bring it in and put it in the rabbit cages. They'd nibble and they'd nibble the way they do. I seen them. Every six weeks or so, them does would throw a litter. So we'd have plenty of rabbits to eat or sell. And we'd keep a few pigeons to go flying round and round the windmill like they'd done when I was a kid. And it'd be our own. Nobody could can us. If we don't like a guy, we could say, get to hell out, and by God, he's gotta do it. And if a friend come along, why? We'd have an extra bunk. Know what we'd say? We'd say, why don't you spend the night? And by God, he would. We'd have a setter dog and a couple of striped cats. But you gotta watch out them cats, don't get the little rabbits. You just let them try. I'll break their goddamn necks. I'll smash them cats flat with a stick. I'll smash them flat with a stick. That's what I do. You know where there's a place like that? 
<laughs> Suppose I do. What's that to you? You don't need to tell me where it's at. Might be any place. Sure, that, that's right. You couldn't find it in a hundred years. How much they want for a place like that? Well, I, I could get it for 600 bucks. The old people that owns it is flat bust. And the old lady needs medicine. Say, what's it to you? You got nothing to do with us. I ain't much good with only one hand. I lost my hand right here on the ranch. That's why they didn't can me. They give me a job swamping, and they give me $250 because I lost my hand. And I got 50 more saved up right in the bank right now. That's 300 And I got 40 more coming at the end of the month. Tell you what. Suppose I went in with you guys. That's 340 bucks I'd put in. I, I ain't much good, but I could cook and tend the chickens and hold the garden some. How'd that be? I gotta think about that. We was always gonna do it by ourselves, me and Lenny. I never thought of nobody else. I'd make a will. Leave my share to you guys in case I kicked off. I ain't got no relations or nothing. You fellas got any money? Maybe we could go there right now. <sighs> we got 10 bucks between us. Say, look, me and Lenny work a month and don't spend nothing at all. We'll have 100 bucks. That would be 440. I bet we could swing her for that. Then you and Lenny could go get her started and I'd get a job and make up the rest. You, you could sell eggs and stuff like that. Jesus Christ. I bet we could swing her. I bet we could swing her. I got hurt four years ago. They'll can me pretty soon. Just as soon as I can't swamp out no bunkhouses, they'll put me on the county. Maybe if I give you guys my money, you'll let me hoe in the garden, even when I ain't no good at it. And I'll wash dishes and little chicken stuff like that. But hell, I'll be on our own place. I'll be let to work on our own place. You seen what they done to my dog. They says he wasn't no good to himself nor nobody else. But when I'm that way, nobody will shoot me. I wish somebody would. They won't do nothing like that. I won't have no place to go and I can't get no more jobs. We'll do her. God damn, we'll fix up that little old place and we'll go live there. Suppose it was a carnival, or a circus come to town, or, or a ball game, or any damn thing. We'd just go to her. We wouldn't ask nobody if we could. Just say we'll go to her, but by God, we would. Just milk the cow and sling some grain to the chickens and go to her. And put some grass to the rabbits. I wouldn't forget to feed them. When we gonna do it, George? In one month, right smack in one month. Know what I'm going to do? I'm going to write them old people that owns the place that will take her. And Candy will send $100 to bind her. I sure will. They got a good stove there? Sure, got a nice stove. Burns coal or wood. I'm going to take my pup. <laughs> I bet by Christ he likes it there. Now don't nobody tell about her. Just us three and nobody else. They're liable to can us so we can't make no steak. We'll just go on like we was a bunch of punks. Like we was going to buck barley the rest of our lives. And then all of a sudden, one day, bang! We got our pay and scram out of here. I can give you 300 right now. And not tell nobody. We won't tell nobody, George. Goddamn right we won't. You know, seems to me I can almost smell that carnation stuff that goddamn tart dumps on herself. Who you calling a tart? I come from a nice home. I was brung up by nice people. Nobody never got to me before I was married. I was straight. I tell you, I was good. Well, I was. You know Curly. You know he wouldn't stay with me if he wasn't sure. I'll tell you, Curly is sure. You've got no right to call me a tart. If you ain't a tart... What you always hanging around guys for? Why are you sneaking around looking into windows? You got a house and you got a man. We don't want no trouble from you. Sure. 
Sure, I got a man. He ain't never home. I got nobody to talk to. I got nobody to be with. Think I can just sit home and do nothing but cook for Curly? I want to see somebody. Just see him and talk to him. There ain't no women, and I can't walk into town. And Curly don't take me to no dances now. I tell you, I just want to talk to somebody. If you're just friendly, what you giving out the eye for and flopping your cane around? I just want to be nice. Oh, come on. Well, you don't have to get mad about it, do you? I ain't mad, but I just don't want no more questions, that's all. I just don't want no more questions. Slim. Get going. We don't want no trouble. Slim, come on. Well... Well, I didn't mean nothing, Slim. I just asked you. Well, you've been asking too often. I'm getting goddamn sick of it, too. If you can't look after your own wife, what do you expect me to do about it? You lay off of me. I'm just trying to tell you I didn't mean nothing. I just thought you might have saw her. Why don't you tell her to stay the hell home where she belongs? You let her hang around the bunkhouses, and pretty soon, you're going to have something on your hands. You keep out of this unless you want to step outside. <laughs> oh, oh, why, you goddamn punk. You tried to throw a scare into Slim, and you couldn't make it stick. Slim threw a scare into you. You're yellow as a frog's belly. I don't care if you're the best boxer in the country. You come for me, and I'll kick your goddamn head off. <laughs> Glove full of Vaseline. <laughs> By God, she's been in here. I can smell. By God, she's been in here. You was here. The other guys was outside. Now, God damn you, you talk. Somebody got to beat the hell out of you. I guess I'm elected. <laughs> what the hell you laughing at? Huh? Oh, come on, you big bastard. Get up on your feet. No big son of a bitch is going to laugh at me. I'll show you who's yellow. That ain't no way, Curly. He ain't done nothing to you. Lay off him, will you, Curly? He ain't no fighter. <laughs> Sock him back, <laughs> big guy. Don't be Make afraid him of him. Leave me oh, alone give him a chance, Curly. Door. Give him a chance. Get him, Lenny. Get him. <laughs> Let go of him, Lenny. Let go. <laughs> Oh, he got his oh, hand. Oh, oh, look at that, will ya? Uh, Jesus, uh, what a guy. Uh, 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 uh. Let go of his hand, lady. Slim, come help me while this guy's got any hand left. You told me to, George. I heard you tell me to. Well, we gotta get him to a doctor. It looked to me like every bone in his hand is busted. I didn't want to I didn't want to hurt him. Carlson, you go get the candy wagon out. He'll have to go into Solar Dad and get his hand fixed up. <laughs> it ain't your fault. This punk had it coming to him. But Jesus, he ain't hardly got no hand left. Slim, will, will we get canned now? Will Curly's old man can us now? <sighs> I don't know. Curly, you got sense enough to listen? Mm-hmm. Well, then you listen. I think you got your hand caught in a machine. And if you don't tell nobody what happened, we won't. But you just tell and try to get this guy canned, and we'll tell everybody. And uh, then will you uh, get the laugh. Uh, Come on now. Carlson's going to take you into the doctor. Ah. Uh, uh. Let's see your hands, Lenny. Christ Almighty. L Lenny was just scared. He he didn't know what to do. I, I told Candy nobody ought never to fight him. That's just what you done. Right this morning when Curly first lit into him, you says he better not fool with Lenny if he knows what's good for him. It ain't your fault. You don't need to be scared no more. You done just what I told you to. 
Maybe you better go in the washroom and clean up your face. You look like hell. I didn't want no trouble. C come on, I'll, I'll go with you. George? What you want? And I still tend the rabbits, George. no right to come in my room. This here's my room. Nobody got any right in here but me. I ain't doing nothing. I just come in the barn to look at my pup. And I seen your light. Well, I got a right to have a light. You go on and get out of my room. I ain't wanted in the bunkhouse, and you ain't wanted in my room. Why ain't you wanted? Because I'm black. They play cards in there. But I can't play because I'm black. They say I stink. Well, I tell you all, stick to me. Everybody went into town. Slim and George and everybody. George says, I got to stay here and not get into no trouble. I seen your light. Well, what do you want? Nothing. I, I seen your light. I, I thought I could just come in and and set. I don't know what you're doing in the barn anyway. You ain't no Skinner. There's no call for a bucket to come into the barn at all. You've got nothing to do with the horses and the mules. The pup? I come to see my pup. Well, goddammit. Go on and see your pup then. Don't go no place where you ain't wanted. Uh, I, I looked at him a little. Slim says I ain't to pet him very much. Well, you've been taking him out of nest all the time. I wonder the old lady don't move him someplace else. Oh, she don't care. <laughs> she lets me. Come on in and sit a while. As long as you won't get out and leave me alone, might as well sit down. All the boys going into town, huh? All but old Candy. He just sits in the bunkhouse sharpening his pencils and sharpening and figuring. Figuring? What can you figuring about? About the land. About the little place. You're nuts. You're crazy as a witch. What land are you talking about? The land we're going to get. And <laughs> a little house. And pigeons. Just nuts. I don't blame the guy you're traveling with for keeping you out of sight. It ain't no lie. We're gonna do it. Gonna get a little place and live off the fat of the land. Sit down. Sit down right there. It ain't no lie. Every word's the truth. You can ask George. You travel around with George, don't you? Sure. <laughs> Me and him goes every place together. Sometimes he talk, and you don't know what the hell he's talking about. Ain't that so? Ain't that so? Yeah, sometimes. Just talks on, and you don't know what the hell it's all about. How long do you think it'll be before them pups is old enough to pet? <laughs> A guy can talk to you. And be sure you won't go blabbering. A couple of weeks and them pups will be all right. George knows what he's about. He just talks and you don't understand. George can tell you screwy things and it don't matter. It's just the talking. It's just being with another guy, that's all. Suppose George don't come back no more. Suppose he took a part and just ain't coming back. What'd you do then? What? What? I said, suppose George went to town tonight and you never heard of him no more. Just suppose that. He won't do it. George wouldn't do nothing like that. I've been with George a long time. He'll come back tonight. Don't you think he will? Nobody can tell what a guy would do. Let's say he wants to come back and can't. 
suppose he gets killed or hurt, or he can't come back. I don't know. Say, what are you doing anyway? It ain't true. George ain't got hurt. You want me to tell you what'll happen? They'll take you to the booby hatch. They'll tie you up with a collar like a dog. Then you'll be just like me, living in the kennel. <laughs> Who hurt George? I was just supposing. George ain't hurt. He's all right. He'll be back all right. What you supposing for? Ain't nobody gonna suppose any hurt to George. Now sit down. George ain't hurt. Go on now, sit down. Ain't nobody gonna talk no hurt to George. Maybe you can see now. You got George. You know, he's coming back. Suppose you didn't have nobody. Guy needs somebody to be near him. Guy goes nuts if he ain't got nobody. I tell you, a guy gets too lonely, he gets sick. George gonna come back. Maybe George come back already. Maybe I better go see. I don't mean to scare you. He'll come back. I was talking about myself. George won't go away and leave me. I know George won't do that. I remember when I was a little kid on my old man's chicken ranch. I had two brothers. They was always near me. Always there. Used to sleep right in the same room. Right in the same bed, all three. I had a strawberry patch. Had an alfalfa patch. Used to turn the chickens out in the alfalfa patch on a Sunday morning. White chickens they were. George says we're gonna have alfalfa. You're nuts. We are too gonna get it. You ask George. You're nuts. I've seen hundreds of them. They come, they quit, and they go on. Every damn one of them got a little piece of land in his head and never a goddamn one of them gets it. Just like heaven. Everybody wants a little piece of land. Nobody never gets to heaven. And nobody gets no land. We are too. It's just in your head. Guys all the time talking about it. But it's just in your head. I guess somebody's out there. Maybe Slim. That too, Slim? Slim went into town. Say, you seen Lenny? You mean the big guy? Yeah. You seen him around any place? He's in here. Look, Lenny, I've been figuring something out about the place. You can come on in if you want. Uh, I don't know. Of course, if you want me to. Come on in. Everybody's coming in. You might just as well get to be a goddamn racetrack. You got a nice, cozy little place in here. Must be nice to have a room to yourself this way. Sure. And my new pile under the window. All to myself. It's swell. You said about the place. You know, I've been here a long time. And Crook's been here a long time. This is the first time I've ever been in his room. Guys don't come in a colored man's room. Nobody's been in here but Slim. The place. You said about the place. Yeah, I got it all figured out. We can make some real money on them rabbits if we go about it right. But I get to tend them. George says I get to tend them. He promised. You guys just kidding yourselves. You'll talk about it a hell of a lot. But you won't get no land. You'll be a swamper here until they take you out of the box. You know, I've seen too many guys. We're going to do it. George says we are. We got the money right now. Yeah. And where's George now? In town in a cat house. That's where your money's going. I tell you, I've seen it happen too many times. George ain't got the money in town. The money's in the bank. Me and Lenny and George, we gonna have a room to ourselves. We, we gonna have a dog and chickens. We gonna have green corn and maybe a cow. You say you got the money? We got most of it. Just a little bit more to get. Have it all in one month. George's got the land all picked out too. I've never seen a guy really do it. If you guys want a hand to work for nothing, just as key. Well, I'll come and lend a hand. I ain't so crippled I can't work like a solo bitch if I wanted to. <clears throat> you couldn't go to bed like I told you, could you, Lenny? Hell no. You got to get out in society and flap your mouth. Holding a convention out here. You was gone. There wasn't nobody in the bunkhouse. 
I ain't done no bad things, George. Only time I get any peace is when you're asleep. If you ever get walking in your sleep, I'll chop off your head like a chicken. Yeah. We were just sitting here talking. Ain't no harm in that. Yeah, I heard you. Gotta be here every minute, I guess. Gotta watch you. It ain't nothing against you, Crooks. We just wasn't gonna tell nobody. Uh, didn't you have no fun in town? Oh, I sat in a chair and Susie was cracking jokes and the guys were starting to raise a little puny hell. Christ almighty, I've never been this way before. I'm just gonna set out a dime and a nickel for a shop and I think, what a hell of a lot of bulk carrot seed you can get for 15 cents. Not in them damn little envelopes, but bulk seed, you sure can. So pretty soon I come back. I can't think of nothing else. Them guys slinging money around got me jumpy. Guy gotta have some fun. I was to a parlor house in Bakersfield once. God almighty, what a place. Went upstairs on a red carpet. They was big pictures on the wall. We sat in big soft chairs. They were cigarettes on the table and they was free. Pretty soon a feller come in with drinks on a tray and them drinks was free. Take all you want. Mm, pretty soon, the girls come in and they was just as polite and nice and quiet and pretty. Didn't seem like hookers. Made you kind of scared to ask them. That was a long time ago. Yeah? Would them soft chairs set you back? Fifteen bucks. <laughs> so you got a cigarette and a whiskey and a look at a pretty dress and it cost you twelve and a half bucks extra. You shot a week's pay to walk on that red carpet. A week's pay? Sure. But I worked weeks all my life. I can't remember none of them weeks. But that was nearly 20 years ago. And I can remember that. Girl I went with was named Arlene. Had on a pink silk dress. <laughs> I suppose you're looking for Curly. <laughs> well, Curly ain't here. Curly ain't here. I wanted to ask Crook something. I didn't know you guys was here. Didn't George tell you before? We don't want nothing to do with you. You know damn well Curly ain't here. I know where Curly went. Got his arm in a sling and he went anyhow. I tell you, I'd come out to ask Crook something. Maybe you better go along to your own house. You hadn't ought to come near a colored man's room. I don't want no trouble. You don't want to ask me nothing. You got a husband. You got no call to come fooling around with other guys causing trouble. I try to be nice and polite to you lousy bindle bums, but you're too good. I tell you, I could have went with shows. And, and a guy wanted to put me in pictures right in Hollywood. Well, I come out here to ask somebody something, and- I had enough. You ain't wanted here. We told you you ain't calling us bindle stiffs. You got floozy ideas what us guys amounts to. You ain't got sense enough to see us guys ain't bindle stiffs. Suppose you could get us canned. Suppose you could. Well, you think we'd hit the highway and look for another two-bit job. You don't know we got our own ranch to go to and our own house and fruit trees. And we got friends. That's what we got. Maybe there was a time when we didn't have nothing, but that ain't no more. You damn old goat. You had two bits, you'd be in Soledad getting a drink and sucking the bottom of the glass. Maybe she could ask Crooks what she come to ask and then get the hell home. I don't think she come to ask nothing. What happened to Curly's hand? Shh. <laughs> so it wasn't no machine. Curly didn't act like he was telling the truth. Well, come on, Crooks, what happened? I wasn't there. I didn't see it. Well, what happened? I won't let on to Curly. He says he caught his hand in a gear. Who done it? Didn't nobody do it. So you done it. Well, he had it coming. I didn't have no fuss with Curly. Well, maybe now you ain't scared of him no more. Maybe you'll talk to me sometimes now. Everybody was scared of him. Look, I didn't saw Curly. If he had trouble, it ain't none of our affair. Ask Curly about it. Now listen, I'm going to try to tell you. We told you to get the hell out and it don't do no good. So I'm going to tell you another way. Us guys got something we're going to do. If you stick around, you'll gum up the works. It ain't your fault. 
If a guy steps on a round pebble and falls down and breaks his neck, it ain't the pebble's fault. But the guy wouldn't have did it if the pebble wasn't there. What you talking about pebbles? If you didn't sock Curly, who did? Where'd you get them bruises on your face, big fella? I tell you, Curly got his hand caught in a machine. He caught his hand in a machine. So now get out of here. So, it was you. Well, maybe you're dumb like they say. And maybe, maybe you're the only guy on the ranch with guts. You're a nice fella. Listen, you, you, I tried to give you a break. Don't you walk into nothing. We ain't gonna let you mess up what we're gonna do. You let this guy alone and get the hell out of here. You ain't telling me what to do. I got a right to talk to anybody I want to. Why, you... <clears throat> What's this? George, no, the boss. Hi, your boss. Why do you got to get killed? You ain't so little as mice. I didn't bounce you hard. Now maybe George ain't gonna let me tend no rabbits if he finds out you got killed. This ain't no bad thing like I gotta hide in the brush. I'll tell George I found it dead. But he'll know. George always knows. He'll say, you, you done it. Don't try to put nothing over on me. And he'll say, now just for that, you don't get to tend. No. You know what? God damn you, pup! Why do you got to get killed? You ain't so little as mice. <clears throat> now he won't let me. Now he won't let me. <sighs> He wasn't big enough. They told me and told me you wasn't. I didn't know you'd get killed so easy. <laughs> well, maybe George won't care. This here goddamn little son of a bitch wasn't nothing to George. Lenny, where you at? Thought I'd find you here. Say, I've been talking to Slim. It's okay, we ain't gonna get the can. Slim's been talking to the boss. Slim told the boss, you guys is good buckers. The boss got to move the grain. Remember what hell the boss gave us last night? He told Slim he got his eye on you and George, but you ain't gonna get the can. Oh, and say, the boss give Curly's wife hell too. Told her never to go near the men no more. Give her worse hell than you and George. Ain't you glad? Sure. You ain't sick. Uh-oh. I gotta go tell George. See you later. Who's there? Hey! What, what you doing here? Just sitting here. You seen what I done? Yeah. You, you bring a valise. You won't tell him, will you? I ain't gonna have nothing to do with you. George 
told me I ain't to talk to you or nothing. George give you all your orders? Not talk, knowing nothing. You won't tell about that suitcase? I ain't gonna stay here no more. Tonight I'm gonna get out. Come here and get my stuff and get out. I ain't gonna be run over no more. I'm gonna go in pictures. What you got there? Nothing. I ain't gonna talk to you. George says I ain't. Listen, the guy's got a horseshoe tenement out there. It's only four o'clock. Them guys ain't gonna leave that tenement. They got money bet. You don't need to be scared to talk to me. I ain't supposed to. What you got under there? Just my pop. Just my little old pop. <gasps> oh, why? He's dead. He was so little. I was just playing with him, and he made like he's gonna bite me, and I made like I'm gonna smack him, and I done it, and then he was dead. Oh, don't you worry none. He was just a mutt. The whole country is full of mutts. It ain't that so much. George gonna be mad. Maybe he won't let me. What he said I could tend. Don't you worry. Them guys got money bet on that horseshoe tenement. They ain't gonna leave it. And tomorrow I'll be gone. I ain't gonna let them run over me. We gonna have a little place. A raspberry bushes. I ain't meant to live like this. I come from Salinas. Well, a show come through and I talked to a guy that was in it. He says I could go with the show. My old lady wouldn't let me because I was only 15. I wouldn't be no place like this if I went with that show, you bet. Gonna take a sack and I fill it up with alfalfa. And Another time, I met a guy and he was in pictures. Went out to the Riverside Dance Palace with him. He said he was going to put me in pictures. Said I was a natural. Soon as he got back to Hollywood, he was going to write me about it. I never got that letter. I think my old lady stole it. Well, I wasn't going to stay no place where they stole your letters. So I, I married Curly. Met him out to the Riverside Dance Palace, I too. I hope George ain't going to be mad about this. Oh. I ain't told this to nobody before. Maybe I oughtn't to. I don't like Curly. He ain't a nice fella. I might have stayed with him, but last night him and his old man both lit into me. I'm about to stay here. Don't tell nobody till I get clear away. I'll go in the night and thumb a ride to Hollywood. We're gonna get out of here pretty soon. This ain't no nice place. Gonna get in the movies and have nice clothes. All them nice clothes like they wear. They'll take pictures of me. When they have them openings, I'll go and talk in the radio. And it won't cost me nothing, because I'm in the picture. All them nice clothes like they wear. Because this guy says I'm a natural. We're gonna go away. Far away from here. Of course, when I run away from Curly, my old lady won't never speak to me no more. She'll think I ain't decent. That's what she'll say. Well, we really ain't decent. No matter how much my old lady tries to hide it. My old man was a drunk. They put him away. George and me was to the Sacrament Affair. They got all kinds of stuff there. We seen the long hair rabbits. My old man was a sign painter when he worked. He used to get drunk and paint crazy pictures and waste paint. One night, when I was a little kid, him and my old lady had an awful fight. They was always fighting. In the middle of the night, he come into my room and he says, I can't stand this no more. Let's you and me go away. Well, I guess he was drunk. He picked me up, and he carried me on his back. He says, We're gonna live together. We're gonna live together because you're my own little girl, and not no stranger. No arguing and fighting, he says, because 
You're my little daughter. Well, in the morning they caught us. And they put him away. I wished we'd have went. Maybe if I took this here pup and throwed him away, George would never know. They locked him up for a drunk. In a little while, he died. Well, maybe I could tend the rabbits with no trouble. Oh, don't you think of nothing but rabbits? Somebody made a ringer. We're going to have a house and a garden and a place for alfalfa. And I take a sack and get it all full of alfalfa. And then I take it to the rabbits. What makes you so nuts about rabbits? I like to pet nice things. Once at a fair, I seen some of them long hair rabbits. They was nice, you bet. I'd even pet mice, but not when I could get nothing better. <laughs> I think you're nuts. No, I ain't. George says I ain't. I like to pet nice things with my fingers. Soft things. Well, who don't? Everybody likes that. I like to feel silk and velvet. <laughs> you like to feel velvet? <laughs> you bet, my God. And I had some, too. A lady give me some. And that lady was... My Aunt Clara, she gave her right to me. About this big a piece. I wished I had that velvet right now. I lost it. I ain't seen it for a long time. <laughs> you're nuts. But you're a kind of nice fella. Just like a big baby. A person can kind of see what you mean. When I'm doing my hair sometimes, I just sit there and stroke it because it's so soft. Some people got kind of coarse hair. You take Curly, his hair's just like wire. But mine's is soft and fine. Here, feel. Right here. Feel there and see how soft it is. But don't you muss it up. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's nice. Look out now, you'll muss it. You stop it now, you'll mess it all up. Let go. You let go. <laughs> oh, please don't do none of that. George gonna say I done a bad thing. Now don't. I don't want you to yell. You gotta get me in trouble just like George says you will. I don't want to hurt you, but George will be mad if you yell. I done a bad thing. I done another bad thing. Oh, I done a real bad thing. I shouldn't have did that. George will be mad. And he said, and hide in the brush till he comes. Oh, he's gonna be mad in the brush till he comes. That's what he said. I'll, I'll throw him away. It's bad enough like it is. Lenny, Lenny. Oh, Lenny, you in there? I've been figuring some more, Lenny. Tell you what we can do. Huh? Oh, it's you. I didn't know you was here. 
You was told not to be here. You oughtn't to sleep out here. Oh, Jesus Christ. George! George! Come here! George! What do you want? Look. What's the matter with her? Oh, Jesus Christ. What done it? Ain't you got any idea? I should have knew. I guess way back in my head I did. What are we gonna do now, George? What are we gonna do now? Guess we gotta tell the guys. Guess we gotta catch him and lock him up. We can't let him get away. Or the poor bastard would starve. Maybe they'll lock him up and be nice to him. You know better than that, George. You know Curly's gonna want to get him lynched. You know how Curly is. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I know Curly. I know the guys too. You and me can get that little place, can't we, George? You and me can go there and live nice, can't we? Can't we? Oh. <sighs> it was something me and him had. I think I knowed it from the very first. I think I knowed we'd never do her. Still like you hear so much about it. I got fooled to thinking maybe we would. He's such a nice fella. I didn't think he'd have done nothing like this. Now you listen. The guys might think I was in on it. I'm gonna go in the bunkhouse. Then in a minute you come out and yell like you just seen her. Will you do that? So the guys won't think I was in on it? Sure, George, sure. Sure, I'll do that. Okay. Give me a couple minutes then. And then you yell your head off. I'm going now. You goddamn tramp. You done it, didn't you? Everybody knowed you'd mess things up. You just wasn't no good. I could have hoed in the garden and washed dishes for them guys. If there was a circus or a baseball game, we would have went to her. Just said to hell with work and went to her. And they'd been a pig and chickens and in the winter a little fat stove and us just sitting there sitting there <laughs> hey hey you guys come here come here what's the matter who's that it's candy something must have happened what's the matter what happened what's going on Ah. I know who done it. That big son of a bitch done it. I know he done it. Why everybody else was out there playing horseshoes. I'm gonna get him. I'm gonna get my shotgun. Well, I'll kill the big son of a bitch myself. I'll shoot him in the guts. Come on, you guys. I'll go get my Luger. I guess Lenny done it all right. Her neck's busted. Lenny could have did that. Uh-huh. Maybe like that time in weed you was telling me about. Yeah. Well, I guess we gotta go get him. Where you think he might have went? I, I, I don't know. I guess we gotta get him. Couldn't we make maybe bring him in and lock him up? He's not slim. He he never done this to be mean. If we could only keep Curly in, but Curly wants to shoot him. And suppose they lock him up, George, and 
strap him down, put him in a cage. That ain't no good. I know. I know. I think there's only one way to get him out of it. I know. The bastard stole my Luger. It ain't in my bag. All right, you guys. The stable buck's got a shotgun. You take it, Carlson. Only cover around here is down by the river. He might have went there. Don't give him no chance. Shoot for his guts. That'll double him over. I ain't got no gun. Go in and tell my old man. Get a gun from him. Let's go now. You're coming with us, fella. Yeah, I'll come. But listen, Curly, the poor bastard's nuts. Don't shoot him. He didn't know what he was doing. Don't shoot him. He's got Carlson's Luger, ain't he? Maybe Carlson lost his gun. I seen it this morning. It's been took. Curly, maybe you better stay here with your wife. Uh. Uh. Mm. Nah. I'm gonna shoot the guts out of that big bastard. I'm gonna get him myself. Come on, you guys. You stay here then, Candy. Okay. The rest of us better get going. Poor bastard. Gotta give me hell, I bet. But I didn't forget, you bet. I come right here, hide in the brush, and wait for George. He gotta give me hell. He gotta wish he was alone. Well. I can go right up in the hills and find a cave. Of course, I wouldn't never have no ketchup. I'll go away. Go away. I won't never tell George. He'll know. He always knows. Where is he, George? Over there. In the Tuleys. You, uh... You won't, uh... I should... Go away? Yeah. Letty! Where's them guys going? Hunt. Why don't we go with them? I like hunting. Is it because I done a bad thing? It don't make no difference. Is that why we can't go hunting with them guys? It, it don't make no difference. Sit down, Lenny. Right there. George! Yeah? Ain't you gonna give me hell? Give you hell? Sure. Like you always done before. Like, if I didn't have you, I'd take my 50 bucks. Jesus Christ, Lenny, you can't remember nothing that happens. But you remember every word I say. Well, ain't you gonna say it? I was alone, I could live so easy. I could get a job and not have no mess. Go on, go on. And when the end of the month come, when the end of the month come, I could take my 50 bucks and go to Cat House. 
Go on, George. Ain't you gonna give me more hell? No. I can go away. I'll go right off in the hills and find a cave if you don't want me. No. I want you to stay here with me. Then tell me like you've done before. Tell you what? About the other guys and about us. Guys like us got no families. They got a little stake and then they blow it in. They ain't got nobody in the world that gives a hoot and hell about them. But not us. <laughs> tell about us now. But not us. Because? Because I got you. And... And I got you! <laughs> we got each other! That's what? That gives a hoot in hell about us. Take off your hat, Lenny. The air feels fine. Tell how it's gonna be. Look across the river, Lenny. And I'll tell you like you can almost see it. We're going to get a little place. Go on. Go on. How's it going to be? We going to get a little place. A cow. And we'll have maybe a pig and chickens. And down the flat, we'll have a little piece of alfalfa. For the rabbits! <laughs> For the rabbits. And I get to tend the rabbits. And you get to tend the rabbits. <laughs> and live on the fat of the land. Yes. Look over there, Lenny. Like you can really see it. Where? Right across that river there. Can't you almost see it? Where, George? It's over there. You keep looking, Lenny. Just keep looking. I'm looking, George. I'm looking. That's right. It's going to be nice there. Ain't going to be no trouble. No fights. Nobody ever going to hurt nobody or steal from them. It's going to be nice. I can see it, George. I can see it right over there. I can see it. My God, you hear that over there? Yeah. Come on. George. Where are you at, George? Right here. You got him? I got him. You got him, by God. Right in the back of the head. Yeah. George, never you mind. A guy got to sometimes. How'd you do it? I I just done it. Did he have the gun? Yeah, he had the gun. Might as well take it, I guess, Carlson. It's yours, all right. But you got it away from him? And you took it and killed him? Yeah. That's how. Come on, George. Me and you will go in and get a drink. Yeah. Uh, a drink. Let's... Let's, um... Then he done plenty of bad things, but... He ain't mean. Yeah. Yeah, I know, George. But you had to. I swear you had to. Come with me. 
Lenny and me, we had it all worked out. We was sick of going around. We was gonna buy our old place. Could have gotten it for near 500 bucks. We was gonna save our steak every dime. So one day we was gonna get the hell out of here. We'd have our own place. You have just heard the Narada Radio Company in John Steinbeck's play of Mice and Men, which was adapted for broadcasting by Gilbert Thomas. It was originally broadcast on the BBC in 1966. This 2023 remake for the Sonic Summerstock Playhouse was produced and directed by Pete Lutz. The cast was as follows. George was played by Dana Gonzalez. Lenny by Les Marsden, with Pete Lutz as Candy, Chuck Wilson as The Boss, Austin Hanna as Curly, Victoria Fonsky as Curly's wife, Norman Klein as Slim, Paul Arbizi as Coulson, Doug Fain as Wit, and Carl Thomas as Crooks. This is Julia Eve speaking. This was a 63 audio production, mixed and mastered in Corpus Christi, Texas. Uh, 63 audio. This is mutual. Thank you, Pete Lutz, and thank you very much to the Narada Radio Company players for that epic performance of Steinbeck's masterpiece. As you leave this evening, please be sure to grab the Narada Radio Company's entire catalogue of plays in the lobby, or look for tonight's show notes on the Sonic Society website. We're pleased to host Narada next week as they present our first comedy of the Sonic Summerstock stage. Until then, thank you for your kind patronage. I'm David Alt, and good night from Halifax, Nova Scotia. And that concludes our feature this week for the Sonic Summerstock Playhouse. All productions, features, characters and scripts presented in the Playhouse belong strictly to their copyright holders and no infringement is assumed or intended. The Sonic Summerstock Playhouse is part of the Sonic Society and is a proud member of the Mutual Audio Network, where we listen and imagine together. Please join Jack Ward and myself next week at this time for our next grand performance feature. Chris Conroy. And I'm Leonard Vizelsnix, and we're here to tell you about the Technical Difficulties Podcast. That's right, Leonard. Do you remember those thrilling days of yesteryear? The Depression was in full swing, FDR was president, and we were ankle-deep in the last guilt-free war we'll ever fight. That's right. Big Band was the music of the era. You could see a movie with a trolley in it for five cents and hop on Betty Davis for a dime. And of course... You read that wrong. It's what it says in the script. Give me that.
hop on Betty Davis for a dime. See, I told you. My mistake. No problem. <clears throat> and of course, the crowned king of entertainment was the radio. The radio. All the greats were there. Jack Benny, Burns and Allen. The Shadow, the Whistler. Red Rider and the Lone Ranger. And of course, Bob and Ray. Well, those days are gone forever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Pretty much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, since that part of your schedule is kind of freed up now, uh, we thought maybe you'd like to listen to our show. It's called Technical Difficulties. It's a scripted sketch comedy podcast. Produced weekly, there is over 75 episodes. With an archive of over 30 hours of original comedy content. And featuring a cast of over 300 characters, all voiced by one guy. That would be me, Kai and Chris Conroy. I write, produce, direct, and perform the entire ding-dang thing all by myself. Well, you do have occasional guests. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, not very often. Okie dokie. Well, if you'd like to hear Technical Difficulties, here's how. Well, yes, Landon. To do the announcer voice. Huh? Oh, oh, right, right. If you'd like to listen to the Technical Difficulties podcast, then head on over to techdiff.com, T-E-K-D-I-F-F.com to pick up the RSS feed, or go over to iTunes where you can subscribe there under comedy. That's right. It's spelled technical, T-E-K-N-I-K-A-L. We spelled it funny because who wants an audience to be able to find you easily? Yes, we were being clever. Yeah. Certainly outsmarted ourselves. Mm-hmm. So remember, that's technical difficulties at techdiff, T E K D I F F, dot com for all your comedy needs. Go on over there and give it a listen. Come on, Hitler's dead. You've got the time. That's techdiff.com, T E K D I F F. Hope to see you there. Hokey dokey. Bye. I'd jump on Betty Davis for a dime. You and me both busted. That'd be like, what, 20 cents or something? That's technical difficulties. T E K N I K A L D I F F I K U L T I E S. Techdiff.com. <laughs>